Operating multiple plants just adds one additional level of complexity to the management problem facing the seller. The principle that profit maximization requires expanding output until marginal cost just equals marginal revenue dictates that the seller should allocate production across multiple plants to equate the marginal cost of production at each. The simplest way to visualize the solution to a multi-plant monopolist profit maximization problem is to first determine how much to produce at each plant at each desired level of marginal cost, that is, as marginal revenue rises, then determine total output for each level of marginal cost by summing up production across all plants, solve that function to determine the marginal cost of each desired level of total output, now shift to the firm's overall profit maximization problem, that is, find the level of output that equates marginal revenue and marginal cost. Since the seller, as a monopolist, has market power, price exceeds marginal revenue, therefore we need to determine the price that will bring quantity demanded in line with the level of output the firm wishes to sell. And finally, plug the level of marginal cost at the profit maximizing output level back into the supply functions for each plant. We'll work two examples to see how this plays out. The monopolist faces this market demand and allocates production across three plants with these marginal cost functions. It almost always helps to create a diagram relating the individual plant supply functions. Doing so, it is easy to see that a cost minimizing firm would produce exclusively at plant one until marginal revenue from sales exceeds two dollars at which point it pays to allocate some of the additional output to plant two, balancing output between the two plants in such a way as to keep marginal costs the same. Otherwise, the firm could lower its total cost by reallocating output to the lower cost plant. The monopolist will rely on just these two plants until its marginal cost target, that is the marginal revenue it can earn in the marketplace, rises above six dollars, at which point it pays to include plant three in the mix. To trace out the total quantity the firm is willing to provide as marginal revenue rises, we need to solve for Q at each plant. For example, Q1 is equal to one-fourth of marginal cost. We do the same for each plant in turn and then add the production across all plants that would be operating at the particular marginal cost level. So initially Q is going to be equal to output at plant 1 then when marginal cost rises above 2 Q is going to be equal to the output at plant 1 plus plant 2 and when marginal cost rises above 6 we get uh, the output function that adds the output at the three plants. So we get this segmented output function. To find the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost, we first need to solve for marginal cost as a function of our total output along each segment and then add this, add demand to our analysis. With this demand, MR is just 64 minus 2 over 7Q. So marginal revenue and marginal cost clearly intersect above 3.5. So our marginal cost segment is MC is equal to 4 plus 4 over 7Q. Equating marginal revenue to marginal cost, we get 60 equals 6 over 7Q, or Q equals 70, which implies that marginal cost is 44 
and then plugging that back into the band, price is equal to 54. Plugging that 44 into each plant's output function, we get the division of the profit maximizing level of output across the three plants at 11, 21, and 38 units, respectively. Here's a second example. Again, a diagram will help us understand the challenge facing the managers of the monopolist, and again, we'll want to work with the inverse demand curve. P equals 440 over 5 minus 1 over 5 Q, or 88 minus 0.2 Q. Marginal cost is constant at plant 1, up to full capacity, at which point it is impossible to expand output. On the other hand, one can expand production forever at plant 2, but at increasing marginal cost. As in the previous example, the monopolist starts production at the cheapest location, but shifts to plant 2 after producing 50 units, and produces the next hundred there before switching back to plant one. The result is this combined output function for the monopolist. Once total output exceeds 150 units, managers shift additional production back to plant one, which accounts for all of the firm's output less the 100 produced at plant two. So, we have this segmented representation of the marginal cost function. You'll recall that our fourth step in solving these problems is to find the level of output that maximizes profit, that equates marginal revenue and marginal cost, so we need to impose demand on our diagram. We find marginal revenue equals 88 minus 0.4 Q and equate it to marginal cost. Since marginal revenue crosses marginal cost in the middle segment, we have we have 88 minus 0.4 Q is equal to 40 or 48 is equal to 0.4 Q implies Q equals 48 over 0.4 equals 120. 120 times 0.2 is 24 subtracted from 88 gives us a price of 64 and production is divided efficiently among the two plants. So, while the details will vary from case to case, the problem-solving methodology remains the same. Bring marginal cost in line with marginal revenue and allocate production to equate marginal cost at all plants.